they're scrambling to find a bill that they can pass on the floor. I don't know if you want to call this, on Trump's part, a rookie's error, but you don't find a day and say we're going to pass a bill. Rookie's error, Donald Trump. You may be a great negotiator. Rookie's error for bringing this up on a day when clearly you're not ready. Nancy Pelosi basking in this chaos around the health care bill. Joining us now, co-chairman of the House GOP Doctors Caucus and chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee, Republican Congressman Phil Rowe of Tennessee. And here with us on set, the news and finance anchor at Yahoo, Biana Goladriga. Biana, good morning, Congressman. Thank you for being with us, sir. Um, you obviously are still a hard supporter, a hard yes on this. You say it's not just a promise kept, it's good policy, gives every American who wants health coverage the ability to purchase it. So you're talking there about access. Are you confident that bill will make it through the House of Representatives today? Well, I'm not totally confident. I think we'll see. But it, we had a great conference last night and uh, a lot of enthusiasm. Look, this is very close. It, and as it should have been, this bill has been debated hard, not just very sh a short period of time, but for years now. So there have been changes and tweaks made at the very end for, for some people who need those for votes. But the basic policy, let me just explain in my district what's happened. With the ACA, and I'm a physician, I practiced 31 years before I came to, to Washington, D.C., but a third of the counties in in my district have no option next year to purchase insurance. 160,000 Tennesseans paid the fine because it was not affordable for them. And the lar third largest county in my state, there are no options to purchase health insurance on the exchange next year. So we have to do something. And I think this is definitely a better way to do it. Congressman, let me ask you, as a physician, it says here you've right. delivered close to 5,000 babies in your career. <laughs> God bless you for that. Um, but a lot of people talk about these essential benefits that uh, President Trump has agreed to strip out uh, to lower premiums is what, the, what some members think that will do. Among them, pregnancy, newborn care, pediatric services, things that are all near and dear to your heart. Do you have concerns that people will now have trouble getting that coverage if this bill passes? You know, this will go back down to the states. If you believe in federalism, and look, I saw in our practice, and we have a, a large OB practice, delivered about 25,000 babies. My group did when I was in practice. So we saw from the very beginnings of Medicaid where people didn't have access to now, I, we almost never see anybody that doesn't have access to obstetrical care, which is essential for good outcomes. Right. And I don't think that's going to be a, a problem. Doc, Dr. Rowe, and I say Dr. Rowe, the list that we just put up there, the list of essential benefits that would be stripped from any legislation if the law is enacted as it's written now, the law that you support, is this a violation of your Hippocratic oath, do no harm? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, you still remember insurance is going to be uh, is no, going to be regulated by the state. No, we're not talking about insurance, doctor. We're talking about health care. No. No, I know that, but we're talking about those benefits that are provided to people. And look, when I went out and purchased a health insurance plan to cover my family, I bought the, the, the products that I needed, the, the, the coverage that I needed, and that's just all we're saying. You can still provide those benefits. The state can do that if they want to. It's up to them. Congressman, it's Bianca Goldrigo. Let me ask you a question that many of your fellow Republicans are asking right now that disagree with this bill. Why rush? 17% of the country disagrees with it. Why do it now? I think, look, why, well, why do it next week? Uh, now's as good a time as any to do it. At we've 17%? been talking about we No, we've been talking about this bill for, for years. And we started last year with a better way. Look, I wrote the Republican Study Committee uh, alternative, which was a more conservative bill than, than this one is. But I think this is a good compromise bill. And I honestly believe for the first time, with the tax credits that are out there that you can offer affordable health insurance for every single American. And that's a noble goal to have. And look, right now, Medicaid reform, I, we, we tried health care reform in Tennessee 20 years ago called TenCare, and it failed. Mm. The premise of, of, of increasing, of lowering cost and increasing access, everybody agreed with that. And I think this can actually do that. Well, so Congressman Rowe, let's follow up a little bit on that. TenCare did fail, and it nearly bankrupted Tennessee. It was, um, you know, a rough, health, rocky health care transition. It was eventually rolled back. But you're proposing that the state pick up a lot of this burden. So how, if TenCare 
failed statewide, and you're proposing that the state picks up a lot of these essential services. How does this get paid for if the federal government isn't paying for it? Well, it, it is. And remember that we're putting a stabilization fund uh, around $100 billion, and it's been up, to do those things. And there, the gov we listen to the governors out there. Our governor is doing a great job in Tennessee, and I trust them and our state legislators to be able to provide a plan that Tennessee is going to be different than Montana or Georgia. So I believe we can do that and do it very well. I, I, I do trust that. Look, the federal government has, this plan has failed. The, the hospital I practiced in, 60 to 70 percent of the uncollectible debt now are people with insurance. You didn't hear me wrong. And the reason is the out of pockets and copays have gotten so high. I live in rural Appalachia and where the incomes are not high. And if you have a three or four or five thousand dollar out of pocket, that's unaffordable for you. We have to correct that and make this more affordable. And I think this has a chance to do it. Well, Dr. Rowe, this is Eddie Glaw. It's the data, the data actually shows that it's not going to decrease their premiums. What do you say to the Trump voter uh, who will be disproportionately impacted by the passage of this legislation? I think they negatively got, look, impacted I, by the I, way. I don't think it's going to be negatively impacted. Look, you, you had a, the CBO are good people and they, they fill out forms and they look at and make projections. But remember their projections in 2010 were 23, 24 million people would have health insurance on the exchange. The actual number is about 10 million. Half of those had insurance, including me, and I now have Obamacare. That's what I have right now. I can pay the out of pocket and copay. It's not a problem for me. But for other people, it is. And I think we have to make the plans more affordable and I believe allowing people to buy what they want to will absolutely do that. Look, we have and Medicaid reform, we haven't talked about that, but that's a huge issue here and we have now first class people in this country. I took care of them, many of them are my friends back home who are getting second class care and I want the, those first class people to get first class care. All right, Congressman and Dr. Phil Rowe, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Right. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.